Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Warhammer Underworlds once again on a very cold and dank winter morning so apologies for the extra lighting but it's just to make everything visible it's either that or plunged into shadow and today we're seeing the first showing of one of the warbands from the Death Gorge starter box or season box I don't really know what Games Workshop calls them the most recent box anyway it is the Thrice Fold Discord a set of three Silnesian demons we'll talk more about them in a second and how their mechanics work going up against one of the warbands from the two player starter set that's actually called that the Sepulchral Guard who we've seen a few times the massive band of skeletons the, the most you can have in a warband seven going up against the Silnesian demons today on the boards that you can already see laid out so let's take a look at both sides specifics Let's cover the Sepulchral Guard real quick because we've seen them before uh, being led by the Warden himself which is him here. Then we have the Harvester, the Champion and the Prince of Dust and then we have the assortment of three trash mobs in the form of the Inevitable Petitioner, the Rising Petitioner and the Zealous Petitioner. The Warden like leading from the back he can use up an action to make other people get raised and come back into the fight or move a couple of them as well so the rest of them will just be doing his bidding they've mostly got two health the harvester and the prince of dust have three and so does the champion only the warden has four and they're just looking to what's their inspire condition again um oh yeah they, they raise once they get brought back from the dead so they want to die at least once and then they'll come back inspired and move a lot faster from what i recall and here is the Thrice Fold Discord, the three Slanishian demons who hate each other, hence their name I guess. So they're a bit fun in that their inspire mechanics are they kind of get off on their teammates doing badly. So they hate each other in particular, but to go over their names real quick, and apologies if I mispronounce any of these. Their leader is Vexmore, that's easy enough to pronounce, the chunky one in the middle. Then we have Vashtis the Coiled, which is the one with the snake-like base. So again, also pretty easy to remember. And then we have Laskavir the Bladed Blessing, who just likes stabbing. But that doesn't mean it's a bit harder to take note of their Inspire Conditions, because they're all different. So for example, Vexmore here, you make an attack roll, defense roll, or casting roll with Vashtis, which is her, and it contains no successes. Or they're dead. <laughs> then he's like, oh, that's fantastic, and inspires. Uh, Vashtis the Coiled, it works the exact same way, but for... Laskavir, and for Laskavir, it's for Vexmore. So they, they just love when the others do badly. That inspires them to do better. Beyond that, their deck has some fun new mechanics where you give cards to the opponent and it kind of it gives them a boon but at great cost. And other things like that. So we'll we'll see as we go. I think only Oh, well, two out of the three of them are mages. Vexmore is the level one mage, Vashtis is level two. He just likes stabbing, as I said before. Literally, that's all he cares about. So I think that about covers it. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And we are all set up and good to go with everyone on the board, as you can see. And the Sepulchral Guard will be taking first activation in round one. All that remains to be seen is flipping over the Death Guard objectives. Just use these ones because they were handy. So that's objective number four. There is objective number five. And there is objective number three. They got all the big ones. So objective number two and one are over here. And of course, because there's seven of them, every potential starting location for the Sepulchral Guard is uh, used up with two of the petitioners leading the forge, or leading the fight rather, and uh, two out of the three of the demons are on the line. They want to go start chomping on some skeletons, I guess. So, with that, let's jump into round one, Sepulchral Guard's first activation, and see what happens. Well, it wasn't the usual Sepulchral Guard's first activation, since the Warden himself didn't activate to move around his skeletons. The Zealous Petitioner activated and did a charge action, moving his mighty two hexes, because the skeletons are very slow, and taking some swings at Vashtis the Coil. Two dice needing swords for a mighty one damage. He got a crit, and she gets two defense dice, which is kind of rare. Needing dodges, unfortunately, so she rolled no successes and as a result took one damage off her four health. I did forget to go over the uh, Thricefold Discord's health amounts. She starts with four, so she's down to three now. Vexmore is kind of chunky, he's got five, so he's classed as a large fighter. And then Laxfear only has three, so and he only has one defense die as well. He seems like the easiest to kill. He does also have a permanent passive though called Locust of Carnality, meaning that he always counts as supported when he fights. 
Oh, and I forgot to go over. In the power phase, worthless chaff was played by the guard. Friendly petitioners have no bounty. That means they won't give up glory when they die. It persists until the end of the round, or one of them dies. Whichever happens first. Well, we're sticking up here because Vashtis the Coil decided to activate first and get some payback. Lashing out with her Paramount Staff up to range 2, 2 dice looking for hammers for 2 damage. She got a crit, which was not blocked by the dodge that the Zealous Petitioner rolled. He's, he would normally be looking for blocks, but he would have needed a crit there. He got hit for 2, which means he is annihilated. He can, of course, be brought back, though, because that's their whole mechanic. And that does mean now, although there is no glory gained, Worthless Chaff is out of there. So the petitioners are once again actually worth glory if they die. In order to work towards some scoring opportunities later on, the second activation for the guard was the Warden himself, right here. And he does his thing where he just stands there and uses up actions to do other things. He chose a friendly fighter that was out of action. You place someone on a starting hex and give them a raise counter. So the zealous petitioner is back right where he started the game and now he is also inspired. His inspire means he's rolling one extra die for his attacks and he has plus one movement. Oh, that wasn't quite over yet though because in the power phase, although the guard weren't playing anything, the Thricefold Discord definitely were. They were playing Illusion of Power and this is where we start seeing some of their fun kind of bargaining mechanics. It's a temptation, which I think matters for some of their objective cards. Pick an opponent with one or more power cards in their hand. It's worded that way in case you're playing a more than two player battle. That player picks one. Each player starting with that player can give one upgrade from their hand to one fire without spending any glory or they discard two power cards or one if they only have one. So obviously the guard was selected and a free upgrade sounded nice so they equipped Deathly Charge to the champion. That means he has plus one damage to his attack actions as long as he has a charge token. So if he does a charge action he is doing three damage which is pretty scary. Now, we're not 100% sure if this is okay because the upgrade that the Thricefold Discord are picking from their hand is called a False Gift. That is an upgrade they don't put on themselves, they put on an enemy. And they're putting it on the champion because they get to pick second. So this is it, the Invincible Armor. You can give this upgrade to an enemy fighter. Plus one wounds, but they're minus two move to a minimum of zero. They have to use up an action to break the card. It will be impossible to kill, but unable to move. So, based on the wording of Illusion of Power, you are picking an upgrade from your hand. And it does say to one fighter without spending the glory. So I think it's specifically worded that way so that you can use this as a trick to get false gifts out there. So, the champion, with his three potential damage if he does a charge action now, and is now four health, can't actually move unless they use up an action to get rid of the invincible armor. Well, the second activation for the Thricefold Discord was Vashtis the Coiled again, this time doing a charge action, moving one whole hex forwards, just so that she could still be in range 2 to use that staff again on the Zealous Petitioner, because she didn't really want to try and take anyone else out, because they could just get brought back. She used the staff, two dice, looking for hammers, and managed to whiff. So then, you'll see the magic dice there, she tried to cast the Pavane of Slanesh, and it actually failed because oh no sorry it, it succeeded she was looking for lightning bolts I, I thought she was looking for for swirls never mind then so the purveying of slanesh did actually work you choose a target within three hexes and they have to choose to either take one damage or they can be pushed one hex now decision is going to have to be made so one second the Zealous Petitioner opted to take the one damage. He is still in range of Vexmore because he has range 2 on his attacks as well, but it means he's out of range of Lask Fear. So he's choosing to do that. Also, as far as Inspire Conditions, it doesn't say you miss a spell attack roll. Oh no, but she did miss an attack roll though. Hang on a second, totally forgot. Yes, so Vashtis did do an attack roll in which there was no successes. So who likes that that happened? Uh, let's see. Vexmore likes that that happened. Let's just double check the wording. You make an attack roll, defense roll, or casting roll. Oh, it does count spells. For a friendly Vashtis that contains no successes. Or she's dead. That initial attack was a support and double support, which did nothing. So Vexmore now inspires. On his inspired side, he gets an extra defense die. And he gets... I think that's it. Yeah, his casting level doesn't even go up. He doesn't get that much better. But that's okay. 
So we need a pulled back view once again for the third activation in round one for the guard because the warden was doing more of his shenanigans. He did his other available action which is to choose up to two friendly fires and they can do a move action. The zealous petitioner moved on to objective one putting him out of the threat range without him having to do a charge action at least of Vexmore. Oh and also he gets plus one uh, dice I think it was on his attacks. Yeah, his base attack is massive 3 damage, but only has 1 die on his inspired side, it goes to a more reasonable 2 dice. But, because he's lazy, that's kind of like his thing. So anyway, the Zealous Petitioner moved on to there with the move action, and then down here, the Rising Petitioner was moved by that action right there, out of range of the threat range of Laxvere as well, because he's just got the daggers, so he's range 1. Well, the newly inspired Vexmore went in for the kill doing a charge action and moving a whole one hex. Again, laziness is kind of his thing. Or slothfulness, I guess. But either way, he's got range 2 on that big glaive of his, now rolling 2 dice needing hammers because he's on his inspired side for a massive 3 damage. He rolled 1 success in the form of a hammer, but <laughs> this petitioner just won't re-die. He died pretty easily the first time, but not the second because he successfully blocked that. So no damage done. And once again, uh, nothing happening in the power phase. Oh, I see nothing's happening in the power phase and immediately something is happening in the power phase. Inexhaustible Warriors is being played by the guard. Plus one move to friendly fighters and this persists until the end of the round, which for them is after this next activation. Well, it's all movement actions all the time for the Sepulchral Guard. Their last activation was the Warden activating again and pointing at two skeletons and saying, Hoi, go there. So the Rising Petitioner, who was up to three movement now thanks to that card, has moved behind uh, Laxvere right here on objective number four and the other petitioner, the inevitable petitioner since the champion can't move currently, moved one hex forwards onto objective two so they're now holding three objectives and now it's over to the thricefold discord for their final action in round one. Well both good and bad stuff happened there. Laxvere activated, turned around and decided to go after the rising petitioner since he very clearly wanted that objective so he wanted to remove him and he would have been able to one shot him. Three dice needing swords slash daggers whatever you prefer to call them for two damage and he rolled not a single success which does mean that the rising petitioner stays alive which is going to cost them in a second but because he contained no successes Vashtis the Coiled inspires and on her inspired side let's see what does she get her basic attack goes to her basic attack stays exactly the same her spell attack action she has called lash of slanesh goes to range four and needing lightning bolts instead of swirls which is very nice uh and that's about it her passive stays the same that we haven't had to cover yet so she doesn't get too much on her inspired side by the looks of it but either way she has now inspired and that's good because it cost them the first glory of the game Land of the Dead has spawned, uh, spawned, scored rather for the guard. Score immediately after an opponent's activation step if your warband holds two or more objectives and their total value is six or greater. They hold objectives four, two and one. So it was indeed. Well, at the end of round one, a disappointing showing for the Thracefold Discord so far because they are scoring nothing. They're literally leaving the first round with zero points. If the Zealous Petitioner had stayed dead or been killed again, um, they would have scored two, but such as it is, they have not. The Spokal Guard, though, are scoring two cards in the end phase. They're scoring Lay Claim to it all for one. Score this in the end phase if your warband holds more objectives than each other warband. They hold three to zero. And they're scoring Invigorated Dead. Score in the end phase if the number of surviving inspired friendly fighters is equal to or greater than the round number. If round one, then they have one inspired fighter who refused to re-die. So that is another two. If they are spending any, we'll cover that at the top of round two, which we'll go into for you in a couple of seconds. At the top of round two of three, the Thricefold Discord have managed to steal first activation away from the guards, so they will be activating first. One of that three glory that the guard have earned is being spent, or was spent rather, at the end of round one on Spark of Independence, which is just trolling at this point. It's plus one wound and plus one dice to this fighter's attack actions. He can't be driven back. And if he's taken out of action, break the card. It's being put on the Zealous Petitioner, so he's technically back to full health, I guess, because it means that he gets three health in total and he's still lost one. But it's just keeping him alive that little bit longer to be annoying. Well, I think it's a case of new model syndrome as we start round two, because the Thricefold Discord are not having the best of games. Uh, Vashtis activated, stayed where she was and attacked at range 2 
to try and kill the Zealous Petitioner. That extra health wouldn't protect him if her damage actually got through. She rolled two utter failures, and sadly you can't even inspire, because for Laxvier to inspire, Vexmoor would need to have a terrible roll. So, she missed, and did nothing, and then in the power phase, it did Soul Slice Shards, which is quite hard to say. Gambit Spell, if cast, deal one damage to an enemy fire that is furthest from the caster. She did successfully cast it, so I believe the Harvester is the furthest person from her. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, actually, I think that's even. Six. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, she can choose between the Warden and the Harvester. Uh, let's put that on the Harvester, because that means he can get one shot by everybody, because they do two damage. Yes, so the Harvester, who is working with the camera, he's, all, he's as far away as you can get, but they were equidistant. So, I presume you get to pick. So the Harvester is taking one damage of his three. Oh, and we're not done yet. Things are going from bad to worse for the Thricefold Discord, because Undying Watchman then immediately scores for the guard. Score this immediately after an opponent's activation step if your warband holds two or more objectives and one of those is in enemy territory. They still hold three and one of them is in enemy territory. That puts them up to five playing zero. It's a bit of a weird one but the first action for the guard is to do a break action to get rid of the invincible armor that was on the champion. There it tells you there it's a resist which breaks the card which just means it's gone now, it doesn't affect him and he'll be free to move. And then in the power phase, a glory was spent to give the champion Frightening Speed, which is one of my favourite bits of art for their deck. The, um, but it's, even though it has the Harvester on it, but you can put it on anyone. So that is plus two move to the champion, who still has that Deathly Charge on him, just as a reminder. And that means he's currently movement four. But, in that same power phase, Sublime Harmonies was then played by the Thricefold Discord. In the next activation, each friendly fire supports each friendly fire within three hexes, which might improve their chances of actually landing a hit for once. Oh man, this is becoming really, really frustrating now. Laxphere activated, attacked the Rising Petitioner, three dice needing swords, which he got one of, but he blocked it with a crit, and he was double supported thanks to that uh, Sublime Harmonies, because they're both within three of him, but he didn't roll a support or a double support. And, oh, he does always count as being supported as well, so it would have just been double supports that were extra. The point being, though, is that skeleton just won't die, and that's another activation utterly wasted. Well, at least it's not just the Thricefold Discord that has the bad luck. The champion activated, the newly buffed up champion. He made use of his four hex movement to go round this line of sight blocking hex, to come here and do a charge action into the Lanksphere. He would have done three damage thanks to the upgrade he had on a charge, which would have one-shot him. But... He rolled zero. Oh, he did roll a success. He's getting supported. Ah, there has to be a defense roll. Oh no. Oh no. He just needs one success. What could possibly go wrong? He actually got a crit. So I think that is okay. He is he's staying alive. Well, we weren't actually done there yet because the Necromancer commands was used. It's a reaction. Play during a friendly fighter's attack action after the defense roll if that attack action would fail, which it would. And that friendly fire is not the Sepulchral Warden, which it wasn't, it was the champion. The combat sequence ends and the attacker makes an attack action that targets the same enemy fire. So basically he gets to do it again, but as far as my understanding is, it wouldn't count as a charge. It's a separate attack action after he's already done that charge that just ended. Either way, it's not going to matter though. He rolled exactly the same. That double, uh, that single support rather, is a success. But for whatever, he, he seems like he would need dodges, but he doesn't. He needs blocks. So he fully blocked the potential damage and managed... Yes, to live even after that. Well, it took three out of four activations of the round, but Laxfear finally did it. Getting a crit to do it, which was not blocked, that would have been a normal success, but needed a crit to block a crit. So the Rising Petitioner has been defeated, and they've earned their first glory. The hilarious part is, though, because it took three out of the four to do, they were hoping to bunny hop a kill onto like scoring some objective cards, uh, there's not enough activations left in the round for them to do that now, so life is a joke. And the joke gets worse because in the power phase, Restless Dead is being played. Choose a friendly fighter other than the Warden that's out of action. Place the chosen fighter in an empty starting hex in your territory with one raise and one charge token. So the Rising Petitioner is back in pog form with a charge token though, and he also inspires. And that also means they score, they keep coming. 
Scorvis immediately after you give a friendly fighter a raise counter and one or more other friendly fighters have a raise counter. The, uh, the Zealous Petitioner up there still has a raise counter as well. So that's another glory. Second last activation for the Sepulchral Guard, the Harvester just did a basic move and moved two hexes. No one else wanted to move, although I guess the Warden could have moved them if he wanted. They don't need to. They're sitting prey. Well, maybe Slanesh gets off on this kind of stuff, but this has been one of the most frustrating <laughs> first showings ever. Final activation of the second round for uh, the Thricefold Discord. Vexmore did a charge action moving forwards two hexes to try and kill that Zealous Petitioner who is zealously clinging to unlife for a second time. Rolling two dice, needing hammers, and getting no successes. So that's their second round done. And the final activation for the round for the Spoko Guard, the Warden himself, maybe getting a little bit of hubris here, activated and just did a move action, moving a mighty two hexes forwards and doing nothing else, although he obviously does have some support right next to him. And that takes us to the end phase for the second round. So at the end of round two, the Thricefold Discord are scoring nothing. They came very close again to potentially scoring, uh, if that skeleton had stayed dead they would have scored two, if Vexmore had had an upgrade on him that would have been another one, so that would have given them three, which would have been quite a nice comeback, but that's not how this game has gone. The Sepulchral Guard, they're also not scoring anything in the end phase though, so they are ending the turn on two, four, six glory, so still five ahead, and we'll see how that pans out for them as we go into the third and final round. So here we are at the top of the third and final round and not much has changed really. The Thricefold Discord has once again one priority so they'll be activating first but no upgrades to cover or anything like that, we're just jumping straight in. They did recycle most of their deck, or rather most of their hands, objective and power card wise, just to try and get anything and we'll see if they can come back from this. It's going to be really, really tough. Well start as you mean to go on I guess. Vashtis activated and just did that range 2 hex, uh, uh, two hex attack rather to try and kill that zealous petitioner, almost said a bad word, and rolled no successes. She was looking for hammers and only had a single support from Vexmore there. Didn't have anything else that could help there. Uh, nope, she stops people being supported if she's adjacent to them when they attack her, but that's it. So she did nothing, but that one glory they've managed to earn, that one precious glory is actually being spent on unnatural swiftness which has been given to Vexmore who is the art on the card gives him plus one move and plus one dice to his range one range two attack actions while he has no move or charge token so it gives him like one little spurt of energy essentially which he might need to use and the first activation of the final turn for the Spoko guard was the champion who took another swing at Laxvir, Laxvir and managed to get a crit which was not blocked but crucially he didn't do a charge action he just attacked from where he was so that means he's only doing two damage, not three. So he lives, but not well. He has one health left. Also, they decided to spend a couple of their many glory, leaving three left unspent. They're giving undying and no vitals to this Pokro Warden. They are buffing him up because he's moving in. So he has plus one wound, which puts him at five, and no vitals. So he takes minus one damage from attack actions unless they have uh, cleave or knockback. So he is very, very tanky now. Activation 2 for the Thricefold Discord and the impossible has happened. She's actually been able to land a hit. I believe this is attempt 5. It's definitely at least attempt 4 for them to do an, a successful attack action. I know not just Vashtis has been trying, Laxfear has been doing them as well. But the point is, she's got range 2. She is supported because Vexmere is next to our target, which means that those two single supports she rolled are both successes and he didn't roll a success. He was looking for a block. So the one's risen is dead again. The Zealous Petitioner is dead and gives up another glory, which is instantly being spent on a false gift to give the Helm of Insight to the Sepulchral Warden, which is this. His defense characteristic becomes two block dice, and it cannot be modified at all. The fighter cannot have line of sight to fighters that are two or more hexes away. Now that latter part doesn't matter so much, and once again they can use an action to break it if they wish. So it makes his defense better, he has to be within two to see people though, and it can't be modified at all, which is also potentially important. Second activation for the Sepulchral Guard was the Warden himself doing a charge action. He moved his mighty two hexes, 
and he does have that helm on, so he has to be within two, but he has range two on his attacks anyway. So he was within range to try and kill Laxvir there, getting one success. He would have had a single support here, but double does nothing. And Laxvir actually managed to successfully block for a change, so that denied them gaining some easy points. Second last activation of the game for the Thricefold Discord, Vexmoor did a charge, moving one hex onto objective one there, still staying within range two of where the Sepulchral Warden ended up, using that glaive of his two dice needing hammers, so he got one success, and the Sepulchral Guard, Warden rather, who is rolling two because of that Helm of Insight, didn't get any successes. Now, it would have done three damage of his buffed up to five health, but because of that uh, no vitals, yeah, no vitals upgrade, it comes back down to two damage. So that does unfortunately mean that even if he gets smacked again, they can't kill him because nobody has Grievous on a three damage attack. So it's, it's somewhat in vain, but that's what they did. All right, so it's not all going the guard's way because the champion did a charge next, coming round Laxfear and attempting to get that kill shot on him rolling zero successes so the demon is staying alive on one health well prior to going to the end phase the thricefold discord managed to scrape together one more glory with vashtis doing a charge action round here getting point blank with the rising petitioner who had a raise counter managed to get a crit against him he did not roll a crit and he only had two health and she does two damage so he is out of there properly he could of course get brought back immediately by the final activation of the game but that still gives them their third glory. So they're only behind by three. So the end phase might be significant. Well, it's kind of a whimper to take us to the end of the game, to be honest. The inevitable petitioner, who I think hasn't moved since he was moved by the warden in the first round, moved forwards to hexes, took a swing at Laxfear, needing daggers slash swords and rolling two hammers. He was supported, but that doesn't matter. No defense roll required. He failed to do any damage. And that takes us to the end phase. Can they scrape by... In this phase they're going to score some points for a change so i guess we'll see so this is it the game has reached its conclusion and it does feel like we've gone through some kind of slaneshian torture with how many dice rolls for the thrice roll discord it just did nothing i'm pretty sure they only had two successful attacks i'm pretty sure that's the case feel free to count up if you want to um either way though in the end phase they are actually scoring stuff now which is good for a change they're scoring indulgence given form for one Scoring the end phase, if one or more surviving inspired friendly fighters each have one or more upgrades and are on an objective token. Vexmoor, Vexmoor rather, is inspired, he is on an objective token, and he does have an upgrade. So that's scored for one. And they actually also scored Euphoric Killers right here for two. Score in the end phase if one or more enemy fighters is out of action, two of them are, and two or more surviving friendly fighters are inspired. To the three of them are so that actually gave them three points putting them on par with the six points the guard had prior to going into the end phase in the end phase they're scoring nothing the game is a draw if they still had someone on this objective and if Vexmoor hadn't stolen objective one they would have scored three which would have put them on nine obviously but rather hilariously if the warden himself had killed Laxfear, they would have had a total of two, one for the kill plus one for, what was the card? Uh, where is it? Skills Unforgotten. So that would have put them two ahead. If anyone had killed Laxfear for one glory, they would have won by one. But he just wouldn't die. He, he couldn't get killed by the Warden, he couldn't get killed by the Inevitable Petitioner, he couldn't get killed by the buffed up two upgrades champion. The hilarious thing is, he should have died when the champion hit him successfully the first time for two damage. He specifically didn't do a charge action because the goal was for the warden to come in and clean up that one extra HP to score a card off of. Because they got greedy and didn't just do a charge action, the champion would have done three damage, it would have been a one shot, boom, he's out of there. Because they didn't do that, they made the game be a draw. They, they did the wrong thing, they got too greedy, they were trying to go for an extra card score and that cost them the win. Now granted a draw isn't bad, but it cost them the win. So all in all that was still a bit of a frustrating first showing for the Thricefold Discord if I'm being honest, but what can you do when your dice just say no? It's 
you know we still got to see some fun shenanigans with the false gift mechanics and the temptation mechanics i think that's really neat i also love that they despise each other and that's their inspire condition <laughs> hopefully we kept track of that i'm pretty sure at no point did vexmore roll completely no successes but if i'm wrong would that have made a difference what did the laxfear get when he inspires he gets Oh, he actually does get Grievous on his attacks, but his attack only does 2 damage, and it changes to needing hammers. So yeah, he wouldn't have been able to kill the Warden either. So it wouldn't have made a difference to the score. So at the end of their first showing, a bit of a disastrous feeling game, but they did actually manage to pull out a draw at the last possible second. We'll see the Thricefold Discord again next time. Not sure who up against though, but I want to take them for another spin and to just try and learn them a bit more. But I hope you watched, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching, rather, and... We'll look forward to more in the future. If you want to support what we do here on the channel, please do consider checking out the channel sponsor, which is linked via an affiliate link below the video, or consider becoming a channel member. You get some exclusive timed video series and some other perks as well. And it also helps keep the lights on, which I would greatly appreciate, uh, especially on dank days like this. Enjoy the rest of your day, though, and see you next time. Stop for now.